So should you use Ruby on Rails or should you use JavaScript for your next SaaS application? Let's find out. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Don. I am a software developer and independent consultant and freelancer based in the United States of America. And on this channel, I teach people how to start, survive, and thrive in the world of freelancing and software development. So today's topic, I'm gonna to be talking to you about why I feel that you should use Ruby on Rails over JavaScript for creating a new SaaS-based application. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Let's go through the pros and cons of both. And so I'm gonna preface this by saying that I have built applications in both Ruby on Rails as well as Node.js and React and Vue and all these other ones. So ultimately, I have experience in both. Number one, let's just start with JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is, you know, one of the pros of JavaScript is it's everywhere. If you have a Chromebook, you can learn directly on your Chromebook. There's tons of online tutorials which you can learn from. It's a dynamically typed language which allows you to just easily kind of start coding right there in your browser or online through any of the online platforms that you can code. And it's just kind of easy to get going. It just works. You can see it work in real time. That gives you a lot of confidence at the end of the day. Furthermore, there's a package for everything in JavaScript world. So you can use NPM if you've installed Node. And at that point in time, you can install you know, image recognition, file manipulation, image manipulation, ML, all different kinds of stuff is all done in JavaScript and it's everywhere. You can run JavaScript on the back end with Node.js. You can run JavaScript on the front end with React or Vue or et cetera. You can build full stack applications simply through JavaScript alone. So it's everywhere. And JavaScript is a big blank canvas. So if you only want to write scripts, you can write scripts. If you want to write applications that are top to bottom, you can do that too. And furthermore, if you want to benefit also from static typing, you can use something like TypeScript, which compiles down to JavaScript and will give you static typing inside of your JavaScript or TypeScript files, which then compile to JavaScript. So there's tons of options out there. Again, if you need a library for anything you're wanting to do, most likely that library has already been developed. But what about the cons of JavaScript? JavaScript is JavaScript. And if you've ever worked with JavaScript long enough, you eventually grow to have a disdain for it because there's just these weird things about the language that sometimes don't make any sense. How are you going to work with numbers? Can you parse this number? Can you do this? You know, is that a one is a string? Is that considered? Or truthy, not truthy. There's a whole mess of things. Is this a number, not a number? What? You can get into a whole wild situation. It's just a very particularly weird language at times that some of the things that it does don't make sense. And that can be very confusing for someone who's new to it, especially if you're not using newer versions of it and you're not used to the scoping and you don't know how to properly write good JavaScript. And that kind of leads it to the fact that JavaScript's not really an object-oriented language. Now, yes, of course, you can have objects, but it wasn't built to be an object-oriented language language initially. It does support these things as it's matured, but if you think about it, it's mainly a functional style language. Now I'm not going to call it a full functional language, but the definition of a functional language is, I wouldn't say concrete, but it does have a lot of functional concepts. You can write everything as a function. You can pass functions. You can just do a whole bunch of stuff. So it's a very functional style language. Again, if you're not used to the functional language, it's going to be a little bit confusing. Like I said earlier, as a benefit, JavaScript's a blank canvas. Now the problem with it being a blank canvas is there's nothing stating that this is how you should do WebSockets. This is how you should connect to file systems. This is how you should write out to S3. Any, anything that you might be able to do in a web application. There is a number of options and JavaScript because of that blank canvas says do what you want. And that can be very frustrating because you can run into a humongous thing of just like analysis paralysis where you're like, I don't even know what to use. You'll do that a lot. It's just how these things kind of end up working out for you because it's confusing when you don't have any type of you know, guidance. And if you're new to this, it can be very confusing. TypeScript, I mentioned as a benefit, but it's also kind of a real pain in the butt. If you've not used it before, you'll run into weird situations, and I still do to this day, of how TypeScript works in one situation, doesn't work in the next, and overall, uh, I can find myself fighting TypeScript as much as I'm benefiting from it. So that can also be seen as a major downfall as well. And lastly, of course, because there are no guidance inside of building the applications, there's 10 different ways to do 10 different things or 10 different ways to do the same exact thing. So finding that right balance is really difficult and uh, can put you in a tremendous amount of pain through analysis paralysis. So now let's kind of juxtapose talk about Ruby on Rails. So what are the benefits of Ruby on Rails? Number one is just going to be the speed of development. Once you have Ruby on Rails installed, 
Ruby is very convention over configuration. If you follow everything that Rails has to do, say if you do the Rails way, you're gonna connect to a database this way, you're gonna write your database migrations this way, you're gonna query the database this way using the models, you're gonna do all of your HD, you know, response handling and controllers, you're gonna do your relationships in your models, validation in your models, all this stuff is built into the framework that seems that the developers of Rails have thought about almost everything. That speeds up your development significantly. You can simply say, I have a database, here's what the schema looks like, or I have this new table. It will generate the controllers, the models, which then allow you to just directly connect to the database and say, hey, I need all my person records or all my user records, user.all, I have all my user records, user.where first name equals Don. Boom, I have all the users whose first name equals Don. That's just built right in. Maybe I wanna do WebSockets. Okay, cool, now I'm using Action Cable. Maybe I wanna store files in S3 or Google Cloud or DigitalOcean. Now I'm using Action Storage. Maybe I wanna use you know text with a nice WYSIWYG editor. I'm using Action Text now. Maybe I wanna use something else and build a chat application. So I'm gonna go back to using Action Cable. This stuff's built in. Maybe I wanna send email. That's easy, there's mailers built in. I wanna log, loggers, loggers are built in. I wanna use it with SendGrid. Okay, cool, just configure it with the SendGrid API key. Maybe use a SMTP or you can use the gem for that. So it also has a bunch of other gems that you can use to connect to other things. The underlying connection, there's a basically, if you think about it, it's a bunch of adapter patterns. Say, are you wanna send email? All right, follow this adapter pattern. And you you can send a postmark or send grid or Amazon SES or anything like that. And overall, when you want to build a web application would be on Rails, as long as you follow the Rails way, your speed of development is insane. You want to add a new application that has user login, use the device gem. And in minutes you have full user authentication with sign up, lost password functionality, emailing, new user signups and authentication all within your controllers in a couple of minutes. That in itself can take days to write in something like JavaScript if you're not familiar. Even with the best JavaScript packages, you can't be that fast to set everything up. Now, additionally, on top of that, Ruby on Rails just allows you to be productive. And when you're able to be productive, not focus on the plumbing, it becomes much more enjoyable. So that's ultimately the thing, in my opinion here, that's really great is I get to enjoy building my software business because I'm not fighting the technology to do what I want it to do. Now, it's not all roses and puppy dogs and ice cream. There are some cons to uh, Ruby on Rails as well. Ruby can be considered kind of slow. It's not not going to be as fast as like Go or Node.js or anything like that that's in the JavaScript framework, you know, JavaScript being Node.js. It's going to be a little bit slower at times because it is doing a little bit more underneath the hood. It can consume a lot of RAM and a lot of memory. And so it depends on what you're doing. You might need to be careful and tune your queries, tune your application so it doesn't consume so much memory. If you're using something like Action Cable and you're using live chat and live web sockets and there's a ton of connections and it's driving up your memory usage a lot, you might need to take some time and replace that with any cable which uses a go based version of action cable or you know that's called any cable through go or whatever you might want to use that's much more faster and much more memory efficient so you can handle that so there are options out there though it can be considered a little bit slow at first a lot of people will look down on that but you have to realize what you're building your application for is your application only going to be used by 100 to 500 people a day to log in and check their billing okay do you really need the throughput of a million users every 10 minutes probably not so that really does doesn't matter. So you have to know your use case. And for most use cases, Rails is going to perform just fine. And if you think that Rails can't handle the load, look at something like Shopify. Shopify is a Rails app. So is GitHub. There's a ton of them out there that get a ton of traffic. So it can handle it. You just have to know how to tune it. And next is it Rails is not seen as the hot new thing anymore. It's not the brand new language. It's not the brand new you know web framework that's out there that's been just recently developed. It's been something that was built to be productive and joyful to use since its inception and continues to be that Way, but it's not the new hot thing that everybody wants to use. And lastly, your queries in Rails can be a little bit hairy if you're not used to kind of doing these nested queries through your models or using, you know, I think it's ARL, A-R-E-L, queries inside of Rails it can be very challenging if you're not used to them. So it does take a little bit of a learning curve. All right, so that's kind of the pros and cons. Now, what I want to do is tell you the story of what really set this whole thing in stone for me. Like I said, I've built applications with Ruby on Rails and Node. I've built in multiple Node applications with front ends. I've built mean applications, which is Mongo, Express, Angular, and Node. Those have shipped. But my most recent experience has been with Node.js with Express as an API and the front end being React with JavaScript and TypeScript. I've done this twice actually. And both times, what I have found is every time I'm developing the application, 
application and it has an API and it has a client application, I'm actually building two applications. I'm building the client application and I'm building an API, which is its own application. They communicate over HTTP through the API. So I'm actually building two applications, one for the client, one for the back end. Now, anytime I need to make a change in the back end, what I'm finding is then I gotta go make the change on the front end and make sure the integration still works. That works, that's fine. And that works a lot of the time in how most companies work through integrations and so forth. However, when you're a small company and you're a startup or you're just a single person and you're starting your SaaS application, you don't want anything to slow you down. You wanna be as nimble and as quick as you can be. Because if you're not making any money or barely any money, the last thing you need is something else to slow you down. And having two applications is gonna slow you down. And I had this example from a couple of years ago I built an application, had the API, had the client, and about eight weeks in, I felt that I was moving too slowly. And every time I had to build something, it took forever. I time boxed myself. I said, I'm gonna give myself three days. And I'm gonna try to rewrite this in Ruby on Rails. And within three days, I rewrote 80% of the application in Ruby on Rails. It took about two or three more days and I finished up the rest of the application in Ruby on Rails. So about five to six days overall, total days of work, I replaced eight weeks of work that I had done in Node.js and React. And I moved it all over to Ruby on Rails. Now, of course, that went from two applications, which was a Node API and a React application into one big monolith Rails application. But however, this was a SaaS application that was going to be used by hundreds of people at the time at the most. And I was then able to make changes, adapt quickly to my market, and then respond to anything that needed to happen inside the application much quicker than having to update two different things in the application. While that might work when you have a larger team, you have funding, et cetera, when you're small and you're starting off, you need to think about what's going to work for you, how can you be more nimble, what's gonna be more effective. And in my opinion, Rails is gonna give you that flexibility, that speed of development so you can change, make updates, and just give you a lot more bang for your buck at the end when you're building a SaaS application. And furthermore, there's so many things that are just built into it that you can just build features faster and validate it out there. Because when you're building your SaaS application, you need to be quick, you need to get it out there. And the last thing you need to do is be building more stuff and taking more time to develop and fighting any additional frameworks or any idiosyncrasies of that. If you follow just the Rails way of doing things, you're just going to be able to develop applications quicker. And that's ultimately what this comes down to. How can you develop your SaaS quicker? Use a tool that's going to allow you to develop your application as fast as you can and as effectively as you can. Now you might say, hey, I am really fast at Node and React and I've built my own framework for it. Okay, that's fine, then use that. But for me, what I have found based on my experience of shipping multiple SaaS apps in Ruby and multiple SaaS apps with JavaScript, with Node and React is by far, hands down, Ruby on Rails is much faster and much more reliable to build SaaS applications from the ground up. And that's what I'll be using going forward. So hope that helps you make your decision of which way you would like to go. I'm gonna use Ruby on Rails. Let me know in the comments below which one you've decided to go with or if you have any questions and I'll do my best to help. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.